Hello children, welcome back to the YouTube session. I am your teacher Dakshayani, handling biology from Bardasnar Metric High Secondary School, Arakona. Children, today we are going to see 11th standard zoology, chapter 4, organ and organ system in animals. In the previous session, what are the things we discussed children? In the previous session, we discussed about the morphology of earthworm. Morphology, what is morphology? Morphology is the study of external structures, study of physical characters, we say it as morphology. In that, we have studied what are all the things children? We studied, we discussed regarding, the first one is we discussed about their segments. Next, we discuss about their taxonomic position and their habitat, right? Like uh, epigeics, endogeics, and annexes. And later on, we discussed about the apertures. Apertures in the sense openings, right? That is the dorsal pores, right? Dorsal pores, then genital pores, right? The dorsal pores. With this, with the help of the pores only we can identify whether it is a dorsal or a ventral pores because the genital openings that is a female, uh, the openings for the female tract as well as a male reproductive tract and spermatical openings all are present in the ventral pores only, ventral side only. So, in this session we are going to discuss about the anatomy. So, what is the anatomy? Anatomy is the study of internal structure. Anatomy is the study of internal structure. Study of internal structure, right? And uh, how does the earthworm children? The earthworm is very soft, right? It is always moist. And what is hydrostatic skeleton? Right, that is a sea loam is made up of, we, we possess bones, right, but the earthworms possess the hydrostatic skeleton, that is a skeleton which is made of water, right, and this hydrostatic skeleton contains a sea loamic fluid. What is present children? Sea loamic fluid, right, this sea loamic fluid uh, helps in uh, protecting the organism. For example, uh, regeneration. I will tell you one important thing regarding the earthworm children. Earthworm irkilia. First in the 20 segments, what is present in the sense? All the important organs are located within the first 20 segments. So, if the earthworm is cut or if it lost its parts, after 20 segments, the first part, uh, what? It regenerates into a new worm. Right? So, but before 20 points, if it get injured, it will die. But after 20 segments, earthworms has more than nearly 165 segments. But after the first 20, if, if the if, uh, earthworm is harmed or injured after 20 segments, the first half of the segment can regenerate its part. And that power of regeneration is due to this coelomic fluid. Right? And apart from this, the coelomic pro fluid provides immunity. No yadirpe sakti, right? Immunity also to this um, earthworm as well as, right? Wound healing, if the earthworm is uh, injured, right? It, the serum fluid serves as a medicine, helps in curing the wound. Wound healing, wound healing means punnarad, right? So, all these are the functions of the hydrostatic skeleton that is especially and the serumic fluid the nature is alkaline when you say it as alkaline children when ph value is more than 7 we say it as a alkaline and milky fluid which is present inside the body of the earthworm it's an important question children what is the function of serumic fluid the serumic fluid helps in immunity wound healing and also the regeneration And now we are going to study some important in interesting factors regarding the hydrostatic skeleton. Hydrostatic skeleton helps the earthworm to crawl. Crawl means what children? Urundu poradhi, right? And the earthworm possesses two types of muscles, right? One is a longitudinal muscles. One is a longitudinal muscles, inner longitudinal muscles and outer circular muscles like this. Outer circular muscles. So, 
the earthworms move have you all seen the earthworm moving from one place to another children it moves by stretching the body as well as contracting the body and how the body get narrowed right first with the help of this the with contraction of contraction that is when the circular muscles outer circular muscles contract right the earthworm becomes long and narrow long and narrow so children when this circular muscles contract the earthworm the body of the earthworm becomes long and narrow and when the longitudinal muscles contract when the longitudinal muscles present inside the body contract the earthworm become shortened and uh, shortened and wide so this is how and it is also aided the movement of the uh, circular as well as the longitudinal muscles is aided by this hydrostatic skeleton so this is also the another function of hydrostatic skeleton it helps in the movement of the muscles that is the circular muscles as well as the longitudinal muscles and now we are going to see uh, anatomy i told you internal structures means studying about the organ you know, what are all the organs present organ systems present inside the body so first one the digestive system of earthworm right the digestive system we know what is present children the first segment mouth is present right and the mouth is covered by what is the other name of mouth the other name of mouth is peristomium peri stomium right and the mouth is covered by a flap like structure called as prostomium right and in the mouth opens into the buccal cavity right buccal cavity is present in the segments Two, one and two. So mouth opens into the buccal cavity, right? Like us, how how we possess a uh, uh, what are the parts included in our alimentary canal, children? From mouth to anus, right? Mouth next uh, buccal cavity, pharynx, esophagus, stomach, intestine. finally the anus likewise the earthworm the alimentary canal composed of following parts first mouth opens into the buccal cavity and next the buccal cavity opens this is a buccal cavity buccal cavity opens into the pharynx right the pharynx is present in the segment buccal cavity opens into pharynx the pharynx is located in the segments 3 and 4 3 and four right and pharynx opens into a small tube right if this is a pharynx the pharynx open into the small tube called as esophagus what is this children esophagus esophagus and esophagus is present in this fifth segment right and esophagus opens into the small circular su structure the structure called as a gizzard esophagus open into the gizzard right gizzard is located in the sixth segment and from the seventh segment onwards intestine starts from the seventh segment till the last segment what is present the intestine is present right so this what is the first part children mouth mouth opens into the buccal cavity buccal cavity opens into the pharynx and pharynx opens into the esophagus and esophagus opens into the gizzard so now let us discuss about the function of the gizzard right and what is the food for this uh, earthworm children it consumes the dead and decay plant materials along with the soil right and this gizzard is helpful in grind in grinding the soil particles so what is the function of the gizzard grinding grinding the soil particles so this is about the alimentary canal of the earthworm and some digestive glands are also associated which helps in secreting the mucus and 
here pharyngeal glands like how we possess the salivary glands in our mouth right children likewise the earthworm possesses the pharyngeal glands right near the pharynx since the salivary gland is located near the pharynx it is said to be the pharyngeal glands and now we shall see the about the intestine right the intestine like our intestine it is folded right our intestine is very long and it is folded why it is folded to increase the surface area of absorption likewise the intestine of the earthworm is folded right like this is folded like this right and that folding is called as tiflo sole tiflo sole and why it is coiled in the sense to increase the area of absorption right this intestine what happens it absorbs all the nutrients and the waste particles are ejected out as vermi or uh, as worm castings i told you we can identify the earthworm by the presence of these worm castings the ejected soil particles are said to be the worm casting so the food enters into the mouth then pharynx esophagus gizzard and finally from the seventh segment onwards intestine and finally it is ejected out through the anus and now in the normally in lampito maruti intestinal ck is absent but in the another species metaphyre posthuma this is the image internal image of metaphyre posthuma children it is another type of earthworm you can see in the in, in the 26th segment in the 26th segment what is present a small projections which is extended up to the 22nd segment like this it is said to be the intestinal ck what we say intestinal intestinal ck right so this helps in the absorption and it is present only in the metaphyre posthuma it is absent in the earthworm and it extends from 26th segment and in upward from 26th segment in the upward direction till 22 22nd segment so this is about the intestinal ck and now we are going to see about the respiratory system of the earthworm earthworms how do they respire children they do not have gills they don't have the lungs like us then how do they respire they respire through their body surface right so in the skin for example this is a earthworm children in the earthworm right if this is a body wall you can see many blood vessels are closely associated with the skin many blood vessels are closely associated with the skin of the earthworm so what happens oxygen directly diffuses through the body wall into the blood and the carbon dioxide ejects out right is given out with the from the blood through the body surface so the respiration in earthworms takes place through the body surface now we are going to see about the circulatory system of earthworm and the circulatory system the earthworm consists of right closed what do you mean by closed children closed means closed circulatory system the blood flow within the blood vessels blood flow within the blood vessels and like us the earthworm also possesses the hemoglobin pigment which helpful in which is helpful in binding the oxygen it possesses the hemoglobin and now let us study about the blood vessels and the earthworm possesses three things children one is a blood vessels that is a dorsal as well as a ventral and blood capillaries and finally the lateral hearts so this is a 
circulatory system children it consists of two blood vessels one above the alimentary canal is dorsal and below the alimentary canal is ventral and they both are interconnected to each other by means of this what lateral hearts so now let us see the circulatory system so just look into this picture children all this is the alimentary canal this is a alimentary canal pharynx right and intestine and the blood vessel which is above the alimentary canal we say it as dorsal we say it as dorsal blood vessel and which is below the alimentary canal we say it as a ventral blood vessel right and dorsal blood vessel it will ask you as a difference also children dorsal blood vessel possesses the paired walls paired walls what is the use of this walls they prevent the back flow of blood right they prevent the black back flow of blood and this um another the ventral blood vessels right they do not possess any walls no walls are present so the blood can move in any direction so and another important uh, difference between the dorsal and the ventral blood vessel is that the dorsal blood vessel receives deoxygenated blood from the body what is the function of uh, dorsal blood vessel children it collects deoxygenated blood from all parts of the body and what is the function of this ventral vessel ventral vessel supplies supplies oxygenated blood supplies oxygenated blood to all parts of the body so now can you differentiate between the dorsal and ventral the first difference is that dorsal blood vessel is above the alimentary canal ventral below the alimentary canal another difference is that dorsal blood vessel possesses the paired walls hence blood flow the backward flow of blood is prevented but in the ventral blood vessel no walls so no uh, blood can flow in any direction and the dorsal blood vessel collects blood from all parts of the body it collects blood from deoxygenated blood from all parts of the body whereas the ventral blood vessel supplies oxygenated blood to all parts of the body and the dorsal and the ventral blood vessel are connected by means of eight pairs of lateral hearts this structure children it's a lateral heart right it is pairs one is present above and one is present below so eight pairs just 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and 8 right so and where do this lateral hearts are present the lateral hearts are located between the segments 6 to 13 only and the other name of uh, this uh, lateral hearts is a commissural vessels so this is about the circulatory system of the earthworm so how do this happen children this dorsal blood vessel collects blood from all parts of the body and it is connect sent to the ventral blood vessel through the lateral hearts and from the ventral from the ventral blood vessel it is spread to all parts of the body So now let us recap what are all the things we discussed in this session children first in the anatomy we have discussed about the digestive system first we discussed about the digestive system and we discussed about the uh, how the alimentary canal how it starts from mouth to anus right and next we discussed about the respiratory system how do the respiration takes place children respiration takes place through the body surface yes very good and the next system we discussed is the circulatory system circulatory system so this is assessment given related to this topic children just go through it with this the session comes to an end so far we have discussed about the anatomy in that we discussed about three systems later on we shall discuss the next systems and in the description we have attached the study material assessment and question bank for this lesson go through it children thank you have a nice day